And Anuti, uh, welcome again to this uh, video clip series, My Journey to God in a Very Secularized World. This should be uh, video clip 74. Yeah, again, I continue to, again to separate uh, approfondire, svelare la strategia nascosta delle forze del male per portarci gentilmente eh, con un cristianesimo senza la croce credendo che tutto va bene vorrei uh, questo che okay. it, it, it was interesting that Pope Benedict the 16th invited Cardinal Biffy to offer the annual Lenten retreat for the Pope and the top members of the Vatican on February 27th 2007 the Cardinal speaks often of the theme of the Antichrist the Times of London reported in 2004 that the Cardinal described the Antichrist as walking among us. Days will come in Christianity in which they will try to reduce the salvific event to a mere series of values. It is a key passage in the last work of Vladimir Soliev, a, 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 a rather uh, renowned uh, philosopher, Russian. In his book, Tale of the Antichrist, which was at the center of Cardinal James Biffy's reflections, the Russian philosopher who died in the year 1900 with great acumen had prophesied the tragedies of the 20th century. In his book, The Tale of the Antichrist, recalled the, 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 the Cardinal, he said the Antichrist presents himself as past pacifist ecologist an ecumenist. He will convoke an ecumenical council and will seek the consensus of all the Christian confessions, granting something to each one. The masses will follow him, with the exception of small groups of Catholics, Orthodox and Protestants, who will resist and will say to the Antichrist, you give us everything except what interests us, Jesus Christ. For Cardinal Biffy, this n narrative is a warning. Today, in fact, we run the risk of having a Christianity which puts aside Jesus with his cross and the resurrection. The servant of God, Archbishop Fulton Sheen, he said, the false prophet will have a religion without a cross, a religion without a world to come, a religion to destroy religions. There will be a counterfeit church. Christ's church will be one and the false prophet will create the other. The false church will be worldly, ecumenical, false not according to the teaching of the Second Vatican Council. In other words, the Second Vatican Council offered ecumenism true, not false ecumenism. You must distinguish here, because many people would you just say all ecumenism is wrong. No. Ecumenism Read it carefully, the way what, what it really means according to the documents of the church. And he says also this false church will, and it will be global. It will be a loose federation of churches, religions forming some type of global association, a world parliament of churches. It will be emptied of all divine content and it will be the mystical body of the Antichrist. The mystical body of Christ on earth today will have its Judas Iscariot and he will be the false prophet. Satan will recruit him from among our bishops. <coughs> it, is, it, is false, it is false love to say okay to sin because it hurts the person who commits the sin and it hurts those around the person who commit the sin as well as the whole society. <coughs> Excuse me. Those who remain faithful to God's saving laws will be considered evil and cruel and will be less and less tolerated as we have seen throughout human history. God revealed to St. Francis of Assisi these prophecies very shortly before he died. St. Francis said, Those who in spiritual fervor will embrace piety with charity and zeal for the truth, will suffer persecutions and insults as if they were schismatics and disobedient. Because their persecutors 
urged on by the evil spirits, <coughs> will say <coughs> that in this way <coughs> they render a great honor to God in killing and removing from the face of the earth such pestilent men. But the Lord will be the refuge of the afflicted, and he will save them, because they hoped in him. And then in order to respect their head, they will act according to the faith, and they will choose to obey God rather than men, gaining for themselves eternal life. They will fear nothing, and they will prefer to die rather than consent to err in perfidity. You know, Jesus, Jesus was not politically correct, and thus offended many people. And thus, in the, end, in the end, Jesus was crucified. The prophets of the Old Testament were not politically correct, and thus offended many people, and thus, in the end, most of the prophets of the Old Testament were killed. Mother Angelica, the founder of EW10 Television, Commenting, commenting, she said, I think it right, as long as I am in this body, to arouse you by way of reminder. And said, she said, I like Peter, that's what I want to do. As long as I am alive, I want to remind you to repent, to be sorry, to return to the Lord, to be holy. I enjoy making so many people uncomfortable. we got to be reminded that there's something more to come. The eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We have lost the sacred. There is nothing beautiful, nothing holy, nothing joyful. And we need to get back to that. That was Mother Angelica, transmitted on uh, July 15th, 2014. Catholic Epistles, Mother Angelica. Many times on her worldwide broadcast, Mother Angelica has repeated this theme of trying to wake up people from their spiritual slumber as vividly indicated in the diary of St. Faustina. I might add here that I'm sorry that Mother Angelica is no longer around because very quickly when she had that ictus in 2001, it very quickly you know, the, 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 the ones who directed EWN, it became a greater priority to make everybody happy, to not lose client, clients, to have, have more people sending money, and everybody peaceful and happy. And, and yet, Mother Angelica, she spoke firmly, even if she loses clients, because her first priority was the salvation of souls and the glory of God, not to have more people who watch their television show as many people want today, unfortunately. We need more people saintly like Mother Angelica. In the Diary of Faustina, we read number 153. One day I saw two roads. One was broad, covered with sand and flowers, full of joy, music and all sorts of pleasures. People walked along it, dancing and enjoying themselves. They reached the end without realizing it. And at the end of the road, there was a horrible precipice that is the abyss of hell. The souls fell blindly into it as they walked, so, so they fell. And their number was so great that it was impossible to count them. And I saw the other road, or rather a path, for it was narrow and strewn with thorns and rocks. And the people who walked along it had tears in their eyes, and all kinds of suffering befell them. Some fell down upon the rocks, but stood up immediately and went on. At the end of the road, there was a magnificent garden filled with all sorts of happiness, and all these souls entered there. At the very first instant, they forgot all their sufferings. That was St. Faustina, number 153. And then again, St. Faustina, in, in paragraph uh, 741, she writes, Today I was led by an angel to the chasm of hell. I would have died at the very sight of these tortures if the omnipotence of God had not supported me. Let the sinners know that he will be tortured throughout all eternity, 
in those senses which he made use of to sin. I am writing this at the command of God, so that no soul may find an excuse by saying there is no hell, or that nobody has ever been there, and so no one can say that it is what it is like. And then at the end of this paragraph, you know, after a few, another paragraphs in this part, she said, But I noticed one thing that most of the souls there are those who disbelieved that there is a hell. That was, that was interesting. I end this video clip here. May God bless you and Mary guide you.